Welcome to the Architectural History module in Semester 6 for Bachelors of Architecture. The next lecture in this module is on St. Peter's Basilica, Rome, a center of Christendom. The Vatican's history as the seat of the Catholic Church began with the construction of a basilica over St. Peter's grave in Rome in the 4th century AD. The area developed into a popular pilgrimage site and commercial district. Although it was abandoned following the move of the papal court to France in 1309, after the church returned in 1377, famous landmarks such as the Apostolic Palace, Sistine Chapel and the new St. Peter's Basilica were erected within the city limits. Vatican City was established in its current form as a sovereign nation with the signing of the Lateran Pacts in 1929. The area of the west bank of the Tiber River that comprises the Vatican was once a marshy region known as Age Vaticanus. During the early years of Roman Empire, it became an administrative region populated by expensive villas, as well as the circus built in the gardens of Imperia Caligula's mother. After much of Rome was levelled in the fire of 1864, Emperor Nero executed St. Peter and other Christian at the base of the Vatican Hill where they were buried in a necropolis. Having embraced Christianity with the Edict of Milan in 313, Emperor Constantine I began constructing a basilica over St. Peter's tomb in 324. St. Peter's Basilica became a spiritual centre for Christian pilgrims, leading to the development of housing for clergymen and the formation of a marketplace that became the thriving commercial district of Bogo. However, the buildings were all abandoned with the shift of the papal court to Avignon, France, in 1309, and over the next half century, the city fell into despair. Following the return of Catholic Church in 1377, the clergy sought to restore the walled city's luster. Nicholas V, in circa 1450, commenced the construction of the Apostolic Palace, eventually the permanent home of his successors and his collection of books that became the foundation of the Vatican Library. In 1470s, Sixtus IV began the work on the famed Sistine Chapel featuring frescoes created by such leading Renaissance artists as Botticelli and Pugino. Significant changes took place after Julius II became the Pope in 1503. Julius commissioned Michelangelo to paint the Sistine Chapel in 1508 and tapped architect Donato Bramante designed the Belvedere Court. The pontiff also elected to tear down the 1200-year-old St. Peter's Basilica and have Bramante build a new one in its place. The Vatican remains the home of the Pope and the Roman Courier and the spiritual centre for some 1.2 billion followers of the Catholic Church. The world's smallest independent nation-state, it covers 109 acres within a two-mile border and possesses another 160 acres of holdings in remote locations. Along with the centuries-old buildings and gardens, the Vatican maintains its own banking, telephone, post office, pharmacy, newspaper, radio and television stations. Its 600 citizens include the members of the Swiss Guard, a security detail charged with the protection of Pope since 1506. The Basilica Pippel di San Pietro in Vatican City, commonly known as St. Peter's Basilica, is the most famous Roman Catholic Church in the world and one of the holiest sites in Christendom, dating back to the Roman architecture of the early Christian art period. The basilica, now the Pope's principal church, was built according to the tradition above the burial site of St. Peter, one of the twelve disciples of Jesus and the first bishop of Rome, who was martyred in the year of 64. To maintain this tradition, popes are now buried within the basilica. Designed as a replacement for the old Constantinian church, which had been erected around 320 CE, construction of the present building began in 1506 under Pope Julius II and completed in 1626 under Pope Urban VIII. Admired for its Renaissance sculpture as well as its fusion of Renaissance and Baroque architecture, the design, construction, decoration of St. Peter's involved the greatest old masters of the day, including Alberti, Raphael, Bramante, Michelangelo and Bernini. Note that it is called a papal basilica rather than a cathedral since it is not the seat of the bishop. The Archbasilica of St. John Lateran is actually the Cathedral Church of Rome. 
The latter functions as the principal church for worshippers who live in Rome, whereas the former serves as the focal point of all pilgrims who come to Rome as well as the locals. The Pope who first mooted the idea of replacement for the old Constantinian Basilica was Pope Nicholas V, who commissioned Alberti and Rosalino to produce a plan for a new structure. Pope Sixtus IV founded new churches, including the Sistine Chapel, widened the streets and helped to transform Rome into a Renaissance city, but left the Basilica alone. It wasn't until his nephew Pope Julius II took over as the pontiff in 1503 that things began to move. Julius decided to demolish the old basilica and replace it with a new one to house his large tomb. A long succession of popes, architects, designers, stonemasons eventually saw the project through completion in 1626. The active pontiffs included Leo X, Clement VII, Paul III, Sixtus V, Gregory XIV, Clement VIII, Paul V and Urban VIII. While the most famous architects involved in its design was Bramante, Raphael, Sangalo, Peruzzi, Sangalo the Younger, Michelangelo, Porta, Madeno, assisted by Borromi, and Bernini. The lengthy and intermittent progress of its construction illustrates the changing course of high Renaissance art towards a break from strict antique precedent to the freer eclectic tendencies of mannerism and ultimately Baroque. The artistry, architectural grandeur and sheer mass of St. Peter's Basilica reaffirm the status of Rome as the spiritual, if not temporal, home of Christianity. Having fallen into disrepair at the end of 15th century, the old Satyr's St. Peter's Basilica took a typical basilical form, a wide nave, two aisles on each side and an apsidal end. Originally, it was only intended to modify the building, but successive popes decided it should be demolished and replaced with a more monumental structure. A design competition was held, held by Pope Julius II and the design of Donato Bramante was selected. Bramante's design gave the basilica the form of a Greek cross with a dome inspired by the Pantheon, but rather than being supported by a continuous circular wall, the new basilica's dome was designed to be supported on four large piers. With the death of Bramante in 1514, several others were commissioned, each of whom made alterations to the original design. The iconic dome was designed largely by Michelangelo and built around 1585 to 1590. It was Michelangelo's intention to realize the central unity of Bramante's original design by ensuring the stability of the load-bearing structure through the use of four pendentives and massive piers which were around 60 feet thick. The basilica is built out of travertine stone, which measures 220 meters and is 150 meters in width, covers an area of more than five acres and large enough for 60,000 people. It used to be the largest Christian church in the world, but in 1989 it was acceded in size by the church in Cote The basilica is cruciform in shape with an elongated nave in the form of a Latin cross adapted from the original Greek cross by successive architects. The nave is framed by a wide aisle giving access to a number of small chapels. The interior is lavishly decorated with marble reliefs, architectural sculpture and gilding. The top of the dome reaches 136 meters high, making it one of the tallest buildings of the old world and still remains the tallest dome in the world. However, it no longer holds the distinction of being the largest dome by diameter. Pilgrims entering the basilica are monitored by church officials and members of the Swiss Guard. Inside the basilica is a cruciform in shape with an elongated nave in the form of Latin cross. The nave is framed by wide aisles giving access to a number of chapels. These include the Chapel of Presentation of the Virgin, the Clementine Chapel, the Chapel of Madonna, the Gregorian Chapel, Chapel of Pieta and several other altars. In addition, beneath the high altar is the Chapel of Confession. The interior of St. Peter's contains a number of priceless treasures in marble, bronze by great Renaissance sculptures, works such as Pieta by Michelangelo, as well as a Baroque sculpture such as the Baldacini or ceremonial canopy over the main altar and the traditional chain chair of St. Peter's, both designed by Bernini. The neoclassical sculpture, marble statue of Pope Pius VI by Europe's greatest neoclassical sculptures like the Italian genius Canova 
It also contains numeral, numerous papal tombs ornamented with marble statues and reliefs such as the tomb of Pope Leo the 11th as well as mosaics and precious metalwork. Ironically, the huge and aggressive fundraising campaign required to pay for the cost of the basilica and its contents led to the protests across Europe and became an important factor in triggering the Reformation and the birth of Protestantism. Some hundred tombs are to be found within St. Peter's Basilica, including a number located in the Vatican Grotto underneath the Basilica. They contain 91 popes, Holy Roman Emperor Otto II, St. Ignatius of Antioch and Pope John Paul II. In a subterranean crypt directly below the dome and main altar is the tomb of St. Peter himself. Positioned in the niches, set into four piers supporting the dome, are a number of statues associated with the holy relics of Basilica. They include St. Helena holding the true cross, St. Longinus holding the spear that pierced the side of Jesus by Bernini, St. Veronica holding her veil with the image of Jesus' face, and St. Andrew's Cross. The chapel located in the Apostolic Palace is best known for its frescoes that cover all the walls and the ceiling. However, one of the most important duties of the chapel is as the venue of the papal conclave, which determines who next Pope will be. The Sistine Chapel was restored between 1477 and 1480, and the beautification included the creation of wall frescoes by artists like Botticelli, Perugino, and Roselli. It is Michelangelo who gave it the crowning glory and painted the vaulted ceiling completed in 1512 and finally the Last Judgment in 1541. Michelangelo painted over 5,000 square meters of area that is approximately 40 meters long, 13 meters wide and a height of 21 meters. The frescoes depict over 300 biblical scenes, most famous of the nine stories from the book of Genesis. The high Renaissance art who took over four years from 1508 to 1512 and was made painstakingly while standing upright on a special scaffold designed by Michelangelo himself. The Last Judgment is one of the most important legacies of Michelangelo. The fresco located in the Sistine Chapel with a humongous dimension of 13.7 meters into 12 meters took over four years in the making, from 1536 to 41. The painting depicts the second coming of Christ and the final and internal judgment by God for all humanity. With over 300 figures, the detailed painting showcases finesse in human form and was in fact controversial during its time due to nudity, but later was covered up by another artist. The four Raphael rooms form a suite of reception rooms in the Apostolic Palace, now part of the Vatican Museums. They are famous for their frescoes painted by Raphael and his workshop. Together with Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel ceiling frescoes, they are the grand fresco sequence that mark High Renaissance in Rome. The stanza, as they are called commonly, were originally intended as a suite of apartments for Pope Julius II. He commissioned Raphael, then a relatively young artist, and his studio from 1508 to redecorate the existing interiors of the room entirely. It was possible that Julius' intent to outshine the apartments of his predecessor, Pope Alexander VI, are directly above Alexander's Borgia apartment. Running from east to west as a visitor would have entered the apartment but not following the sequence were frescoed. The rooms are the Hall of Constantine, Room of Hilodorus, Room of Signatura and the Room of Fire in the Borgo. After the death of Julius in 1513, the two rooms frescoed, Pope Leo X continued the program. Following Raphael's death in 1520, his assistants, Gian Fresco Penny and Giulio Romano, and Raffaellino del Cole finished the project with the frescoes in the Sala di Constantino. St. Peter's is approached by a St. Peter's Square, an elliptical forecourt encircled by a Doric colonnade derived from Greek architecture. It ends at the facade of St. Peter's which is 376 feet wide and 150 feet high. Designed by Carlo Moderno, the facade features a giant order of Corinthian columns approximately 90 feet high and is topped by 13 statues, Christ flanked by the 11 apostles. At the ground level, it is approached by steps guarded by two 18-feet statues of St. Peter's and St. Paul's. The Basilica of St. Peter's is one of the four major basilicas of Rome, the others being Santa Maria, St. Paul, St. John Lateran, but it is the dome of St. Peter's, the tallest dome in the world, that dominates the skyline of Rome. Designed largely by Michelangelo and built during the short but active papacy of Sixtus V, 
by Michelangelo's pupil Giacomo del Porto, the dome rests on four pendentives and massive piers, each 60 feet thick. It was Michelangelo who increased the size and strength of the load-bearing structures without destroying the central unity of Bramante's original design. Immediate rivals of St. Peter's Dome include Florence Cathedral of the early Renaissance, designed by Filippo Brunelleschi, and completed in 1434. For details, Brunelleschi followed Renaissance, and Constantinople's Hagia Sophia Church, completed in 537, and the dome designed by Christopher Wren for St. Paul's Cathedral, finished in 1710. St. Peter's Basilica is maintained as a specialist group who continually scale and inspect the building's surface to ensure its stability. St. Peter's is approached via the St. Peter's Square, a forecourt encircled by a Doric colonnade derived from Greek architecture. The forecourt is split into two sections, the first oval and the second trapezoid. Basilica's facade stretches across the end of the square measuring 51 feet high, sorry, 51 meters high and 114 meters wide. The facade was designed by Carlo Modena and features giant Corinthian columns topped by 13 statues. It was Bernini, one of the most talented Baroque architects and sculptors, who designed the layout of St. Peter's Square in a manner of a theatre. With the square as the auditorium and the facade of the basilica as the stage, all in keeping with the desire to make St. Peter's Basilica a textbook example of Catholic Counter-Reformation Act. Basing his ideas on the architecture of classic antiquity, he drew up an elliptical space surrounded by four-fold rows of columns adorned with figures of 96 saints, which was to become the most famous colonnade in the world. Bernini, Bernini himself envisaged the colonnade as representing the arms of God enfolding the faithful and the architecture of the square has received praise throughout the centuries for its elegance and sublime proportions. A smaller square, Piazza Retta, adjoins the great square. It is enclosed sides, lends an air of greater intimacy. In the centre of St. Peter's Square today is an obelisk, 132 feet high, brought from Egypt to Rome in 37 CE, during the reign of Caligula. Originally, it was located on the hill of the Vatican in Nero's Circus, the site of St. Peter's martyrdom, when he was crucified. It was brought to its present location in 1586 and is revered as a witness to Peter's death. Its move must have been astoundingly spectacle since it took 140 horses and 900 labourers to move the 385-ton monolith to its new site using a complex rope winch system. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention.